the Google Play or uh, Apple Store. Please have a clear background when taking your photo. This should be a photo that you would have on a state issued ID or a driver's license. Uh, it's extremely important that you have your submit your one card photo as soon as possible. This is your one card, which will get you into your building, uh, your residence hall, and uh, access to your meal plan. So it's extremely important that you have that ready to go on day one. All right, so we're going to get tar started with our talk. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Danielle Brush, who's going to talk about uh, your first day on campus, move-in day. Danielle. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, like Derek said, I'm going to run through what check-in and move-in looks like. Um, if you do have questions, there are a couple people, like Derek said, in here that can answer those as we go. So if you put them in the chat, you'll probably get them answered as I'm rolling through information. Um, but I also might cover some of that while we're talking today, too. So the first couple things that I um, wanted to remind everybody for is first year students do move in on Thursday, August 25th, and orientation starts as soon as you all are here and runs through that Sunday. Transfer orientation starts the following day on August 26th, so that's that Friday. Um, you will also have a ton of different activities that will be going on that weekend. Angie and our orientation coordinators are going to talk a little bit more about that and then of course, classes start the following Monday on the 29th. So everybody be ready by then. My mouse isn't working. Okay, so move in expectations. And this is for everyone moving to campus. So all of our transfer students, as well as our first year students, um, your arrival to campus is pretty straightforward. So our staff will be directing you and welcoming you to campus. All the orientation leaders and the resident assistants will have very bright blue t-shirts on. So if you get confused on where you're supposed to be, just look for a bright blue shirt and they'll point you in the correct direction. Um, we usually have students standing at our entrances to campus to kind of point you to where you need to go. Um, as you're arriving to your building, especially if you're coming towards Caroline, PG, and Dorchester, um, there will be staff, potentially public safety or other students that will be out there that will ask you for the name of the building that you're moving into. So remember that as you approach campus, because they will direct you to the closest place that you can park your car. Uh, sometimes there's a couple delays um, due to traffic, like getting on campus. So we, in the past couple of years, have had people waiting inside of their cars for a couple minutes so they can pull up closer to the parking space. Um, it's sometimes nicer for you to just hang out in your car, air conditioning, uh, as opposed to like just standing in our parking lots as we're trying to get everybody moved in. So bear with us with that. Um, everyone's trying to move in around the same time. So it just does get a little congested, but we'll help you out there. Uh, so like I said, for parking, you'll be able to temporarily park very close to your building, um, sometimes directly in front of it, if not right off to the side. And uh, staff will be available to um, help you move your things from your car to your room. Uh, if you don't want staff to handle your items, that's totally fine. We will definitely respect that. But if you are open to us helping you, a ton of students will approach you. Just give them the room number that you're going to. Our student athletes will be out there. A ton of student leaders will be out there to get you moved in as quickly as possible. So that way you have more time to actually unpack your room and settle before orientation starts. Um, to help with traffic, again, we're just going to ask you to kind of park in front of the building for about 15 minutes. Staff may give you a 15 minute parking tag as a reminder. If not, that's totally fine. Just kind of adhere to the 15 minute rule if you can. Um, there'll be plenty of help. Um, a lot of people will be around to help you with that process. So just kind of pay attention to who's around you and we'll get you settled as quickly as possible. So what should you already have thus far? You should have your housing confirmation, which had your room assignment in it. If there are any changes, because we do have students who are changing rooms at this point or leaving um, or some rooms have opened up. So you may see like a different change to your room assignment that will be emailed to you. It'll be in the same template that you got your original confirmation in. So just kind of pay attention to that. Um, you should have in that housing confirmation is a link of like prohibited items and things of what you might want to bring. Um, and a ton of more information in that email. There's links to everywhere. So just hold on to that email because it'll come up later. Um, but there's a ton of info in that already. I did send the original batch emails out around the beginning of July. Uh, so if you 
deposited after or um, applied for housing after, I've been sending those out as they've come in. Uh, if you haven't gotten that, please email me um, after the session. Uh, so that way I can make sure that you get what you need to have. But those do all go to your SMCM account. So make sure you're checking that email. In that housing confirmation, you also have your roommate pair. If you paired up with someone in the system by the deadline, you were automatically matched with them. Um, if, if not, you did get a randomized assignment based off of your resident profiles. Um, so our system kind of takes care of that for us. Uh, for our transfer students, a lot of you are in suites and uh, townhouses, depending on your credit. So if you log into your residence account, which is where you applied for housing, you'll see the whole list of who is living with you. Um, the link that was sent out should just, or the email that was sent out should just have your actual roommate for the bedroom that you're in, but your additional housemates and suite mates are obviously just listed in residence. Um, again, the, the link to that is directly in that email. Uh, you also have the contact information for me and our office that was in there as well. Uh, feel free to email us if you have questions, we'll be able to help you out. And you should have received today the sign up link for your arrival time. That link went out um, this afternoon. Uh, so it does have the selections that you can pick to sign up for a time to um, come to move in. So all of the times are the move in times. Um, which we'll talk about that in a second, but it is just uh, 20 minute blocks of time uh, for you to select so we can help with the flow of traffic and make sure there's enough staff available to help the students that move in at those different selection times. So for additional expectations for guests um, and for your arrival, like I said, you should schedule that 20 minute check-in time. Uh, you can come anytime within that arrival time and that's not the only time that you have. So if you schedule the 8 to 8.20 time, that's not the only time that you have to move in. That's just when we expect your car to arrive on campus and we expect to get you checked in at that time. If you're running a little late, that's fine. If you're running a lot late, I would recommend emailing me, but like even if you are running late, we'll still get you checked in. So no worries there. Um, this It was sent out this afternoon. Make sure you pay attention to what you're signing up for because it is kind of challenging and tricky to reschedule those times. So just make sure you're selecting the time that you actually want to come. Um, we do ask that if you can avoid coming too early, please don't come too early. Uh, like I said, the, the times are laid out in a way with the amount of time slots available in a way to decrease traffic and keep up with the capacity of the building. So we don't want ideally 400 students moving in right at eight o'clock because we will not have the staff to help all 400 students right at eight o'clock get their stuff to their rooms. But if you do follow the sign up sheet and come at the time or in that time window that you've signed up for, we will have staff available to kind of get you moved along. I think last year we were kind of averaging like a car being parked in front of the building was probably parked there for 10 minutes by the time everything got removed from the vehicle and into the student room and then move to the other designated lot. So we are pretty quick with it. Um, and we try to be as convenient as possible for you all. Um, but if you could do us a favor and just come as close to the time that you signed up for, that would be the best. Uh, like I said before, there's no move in time limit for you. So if you come at eight, you don't have to be out of here by 820. Um, we do expect guests to um, depart campus before orientation starts. Um, orientation starts at 2.30. I think I have this on here wrong. I think it's at 2.30. Derek, you can correct me if I'm... Okay. 2.30 for first-year students and 1 o'clock for transfer students. So we do ask that guests depart at least 30 minutes um, before orientation starts. So that way all the students have um, the ability to fully participate in orientation, get to know all their new classmates, and get to know all the orientation leaders and kind of have a successful orientation moving forward. Um, it is recommended that if you can just bring two guests with you to the actual move-in process. Um, it's not required. If you need extra help or if you have additional family members that want to help you move in, go for it. Totally fine on our end. Um, we just ask to stay around two to guests um, just so we can kind of decrease, again, the amount of people coming in and out of the buildings. If you can, when you check in, if you brought all of your family members, just approach the check-in table with just you, because uh, the check-in table is kind of small, and we don't want too, too many people right up against the check-in table all at one time. Again, it's for the flow of traffic, but after you get checked in, if you have multiple family members or guests with you, that's totally fine to kind of move in and out of the building as you want. 
For the check-in process specifically, uh, students will go to the check-in table at their building. So this will be directly in the inside of your building. So if you're in a traditional hall, so Queen Anne, Caroline, Prince George, and Dorchester, there will be signs directing you where to go once you get to your building. It's on the main entry level, second floor, directly in the front doors. The RAs, resident assistants, and the orientation leaders will be standing there. Um, they'll have all kinds of stuff for you for transfer orientation um, with students moving into those spaces. It's exactly the same. Um, but if you're going to Lewis Quad or the townhouses, uh, the Lewis Quad office is where you will go. I did put the directions specifically to that in the sign-up sheet that I sent out today, uh, but that's directly across from Solomon's Kitchen, very easy to find. And for wearing commons, it'll be in the beginning of that complex, but there will be a ton of signs. I think they're all like bright yellow with the blue banner um, that you'll be able to see as you're approaching campus. And again, we'll have a ton of people outside kind of pointing you in the right direction. Uh, but once you get to the check-in table, we'll have some orientation leaders there who will give you your ID cards if you've already taken your picture. Again, shameless plug, please take your ID picture and send that in as quickly as possible so you have it that day. Um, otherwise, you'll have to run around and find it and we're just trying to make it easy for you. So if you take the picture ahead of time, we will have it at the check-in table and it'll be all good for you. Um, and then the RAs will be there to get you checked into your room. So they will give you your room key, send you or show you to your room and then you'll be able to kind of unpack and get settled from there. Um, masks are not required at this point time on campus, we do recommend just because there's a lot of people coming in and out that just while you're checking in, it's recommended that you wear them. But if you don't want to, that's also totally fine. Um, my The resident assistant staff might have them on, but either way, it's totally fine, whichever you choose to do. Okay, I know I gave ran through a lot of information right there. So a couple last housekeeping things, I guess, for check-in. Uh, the check-in times that were sent for first-year students, the first slot is, again, at 8 a.m. Uh, the second, the last slot starts at 1220. We will be out there um, helping with orientation or with check-in after 1220. So, again, if you are delayed, that's fine. We will be out there ready for you up until the time that you get there. So, no, no real rush. Um, again, like your orientation starts at 2, 2.30, so make sure you're there to take part in all of that. But if there are traffic delays, we're definitely accommodating to that, so don't stress about that on your way in. Um, student staff, again, will be able to help you carry stuff to your room. There will be plenty of people out there. For transfer students on the 26th, uh, your check-in time is a little smaller. It's from 10 to 11.40 is your last time. Um, plenty of sign-up time still available for both groups. And Again, we just have that set so that way you have enough time to get into your room, get settled before orientation starts. So we recommend um, prior to move in that you contact your roommates, housemates, or suite mates uh, to start getting to know them now. If you haven't, you make sure that you do do that. Um, it'll make your check-in and your first couple days a lot easier if you know who you're living with. Um, the contact information that they put in their housing application was in the letters that I sent to you all, so you should have that. Again, if you haven't gotten that information yet, please email me when we're done here. Um, definitely sign up for a required time, um, sign up for a check-in time that is a required process, so please do us a favor and get that done. Uh, the system itself will remind you two days before, uh, so you'll, you'll get reminders that way. Um, I always recommend packing early so you don't forget anything that you may need. Um, when I moved into college, I totally forgot to bring a pillow with me. So that was that was cute, a good move on my part. But I survived it and me and my roommate actually became pretty close with it because she had a million pillows. So if you forget your pillow, you'll probably make a friend that way. But I would just pack early so you don't have a mishap like that. Um, we do ask that you submit all your COVID vaccination records or your medical information. Um, you should have gotten a lot of information from that from the Wellness Center. So make sure you do that prior to your arrival on campus. You can register for your parking permit. Um, those are not required to be hanging on your window or stickers on your window the day of move-in. So don't stress out about that. Um, the links to that were also in your housing confirmation, but you can also find that directly off of the public safety website. Um, but if you order it and pay for it before you get here, they will have them available for you to pick up during orientation. So you can get that super easy while you're here the first couple of days before all of our returning students come back. Um, again, shameless plug, submit your ID photo because <laughs> we do need those in. 
And then I always just recommend that you continuously check your email for updates. Um, if I have housing updates, those will go to your SMCM email and orientation updates will also go to your SMCM email. So it's a good thing to start checking that now pretty regularly if you can. Um, I think that was it on my part. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Angie and her staff to talk about orientation. And I guess if you have any questions, just throw them in the chat or email me and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. But go ahead, Angie. All right, thanks, Danielle. Hi, everyone. I hope everyone's having a great evening so far. My name is Angie Wilson, and I am the coordinator of student engagement here at St. Mary's. Thank you for joining us. I am so excited to welcome all of our new students to campus this fall. So to start off, um, just to reiterate, orientation will begin on Thursday, August 25th for our first year students. And then for our transfer students, orientation will start the, fall, the next day, Friday, August 26th. So to kind of start off, the purpose of orientation is to help all of our new students adjust to college life at St. Mary's. And so we have a lot of really fun programming designed just to do that. So some highlights that I wanna talk about real quick will include attending your very first core class. You'll get to know some of your peers, have some face time with them. You're also gonna have a scheduled meeting to meet with your academic advisor. So if you have any last minute advising questions, questions about your classes for this fall semester, you will have a chance to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with your academic advisor to sort that out before classes start the following Monday. And then one of my favorite parts of orientation is going to be the where's my class campus tour. So we understand that when you're adjusting to a new place, it can be a little stressful trying to navigate all the different buildings and especially trying to figure out where your classes are. So we're gonna have your orientation leaders take you on a tour of campus to walk you to every single one of your classrooms. That way you know where they are before the start of classes. That way come Monday, um, you know where you're going and you can get there pretty quickly. So hopefully you can sleep in a little bit. Um, that way you're not chugging around campus too, too early because you'll know where to go. Alrighty, and then we'll also have plenty of really fun social events as well to also give you some more opportunities to get to know your classmates, the people living in your residence halls, and make some friends before classes start. So one of my favorites is going to be the waterfront session. Uh, so various water sports clubs and teams will be out to kind of talk about what they do. We have our directors that are going to be out to give a little briefing about how to check out the equipment at the waterfront. So I highly recommend bringing your swimsuits and your water shoes to orientation that way you can participate. I also want to advise everyone to remember that um, it's still August here in Maryland, so we're going to have some pretty warm weather during orientation. So just expect that, dress for that, and also wear comfortable shoes because we are going to be out and about having a great time at orientation. All right, so that was my little spiel. I also want to introduce our orientation coordinators, Lizzie and Emmanuel. They have been working so hard over the summer to help prep orientation and get everything ready for you guys. So I also wanted to ask Lizzie and Emmanuel a couple of questions while we have them online. Um, so y'all, can you tell me, you know, what orientation event are you always excited for? Only one? I have to pick one? Or you can do more than one more than one um i know i'm personally very excited for um the arc in the dark event that we do with programs board during orientation um there's lots of fun events through that we're going to have a magician there's going to be like all sorts of different activities going on um i think is i can't remember if mini golf is on the list but there's like there's a lot of stuff that happened it's a lot and it's really fun and it's a cool way to see all the stuff that programs board does um but i really like arc in the dark I would have to say my favorite event would be the scavenger hunt that we usually do. Um, those are really fun just because you get to connect with your group and uh, really just get to chill out and like explore campus a little bit more and find all the stuff and test your knowledge of where everything is. Awesome, awesome. And then you guys as current students, do you have any move-in day tips? Oh gosh. Um, don't bring too much. I think there's always a worry that you're not going to bring everything you need, but you need less than you think you do. And the more stuff you have packed in a box together rather than just loose and around, it's way easier for you to carry in and organize in your space. Um, and there's always opportunities to add more stuff to the space as time goes on. But just when you're moving in for the first time, just bring some of the more essential stuff, things that will make your first few weeks comfortable and your time here comfortable. But yeah, don't bring don't bring too much. Like I tried to bring my whole library of books with me and had nowhere to put them. So 
that's that's my recommendation I would to add on to that I would say you don't need to unpack everything all at once you could take your time and just make sure you plan it out and like make it all look the way you want it to look and you just can take your time because you have a lot of time to actually do that yeah Awesome, awesome. I have a couple more questions for you guys, but I also want to let everyone watching know that if you have questions for Lizzie or Emmanuel, please feel free to drop them in the chat function. All right, so do you guys have any advice for how to make the most out of orientation? Go to everything. It's going to be so much fun. I can highly recommend it because um, we have really good orientation leaders and they'll make it a really fun time. Yeah, I would definitely second that. Go to everything that you can take every opportunity presented to you to get to know your fellow Seahawks, to get to know the campus, um, to get comfortable. Um, Cause it's a very big change and it can feel very overwhelming, but the more involved you are and attend orientation activities, the easier the transition is. And also the more fun you have, like you want to make sure you're enjoying the start of this new part of your life in this big in this new location so yeah I definitely I definitely second that come to as many things as possible you'll you'll you won't regret it awesome awesome all right I'm seeing some action in the chat so like one of the questions that someone threw in any recommendations or tips for transfer students mm. I would say the same thing we said before is go into everything um it's a little bit more difficult just because, you know, you experience college already and you might seem like, oh, I already know some of this stuff, but I, I would suggest, you know, um, still going to everything because it's highly fun and you still meet a lot of people and you get to hang out with Oriel, OL, so we just, it's a chill most of the time. Yeah. Um, I was recently a transfer orientation leader and I feel like the most, the thing that I would recommend the most to them is to take things in stride when you're moving, when you're coming to St. Mary's, it's going to be different than where you went before. Or if you took a gap year and you're like transferring from like community college or something like that, it's going to be different than where you were, but just to give St. Mary's that the chance to surprise you, to let you get comfortable. Um, and that even though there will be like that, oh, these are new incoming freshmen versus transfer students that like everybody here is a resource for you. Um, and we're all, we're all here to help. Also, if there are transfer students who will not be having a meal plan, we'll, we will still feed you throughout all of the events. Yes. Um, I'm seeing some questions about whether or not orientation is mandatory. Angie or Derek? Yes, absolutely. Um, we, it, it is a great opportunity for you to get to know the campus, um, to have a good start to the semester. Um, everything that you'll need to learn for the first couple of days and the first few weeks will go over during orientation. So you should be at all events. I'm also seeing, and I've seen three questions. Some of them are direct messages about bed lofting. Can I sign up to get somebody to loft my bed? When will they loft my bed? That sort of thing. Can you discuss that? I can. Um... We actually will not have bed lofts available this year. Um, if at some point toward um, like the second week of school, if it becomes a definite issue that a student does need a bed lofting kit, we can put a work order in for them, but we won't have them available before moving and only as, a, as needed after moving. Um, there's a question about for people who are commuting, uh, we're still offering the same kind of orientation. What differences are there for commuters? We will have a, set, a few sessions for specifically for commuters to talk about your experience, um, but a lot of what we cover in orientation is sort of universal to all students. Uh, the beds rise. Um, Lizzie is, um, if you can see her, she's actually sitting at her desk. So imagine you're sitting down at your desk and her bed is still at her shoulder. So they, they raise pretty high. Yes. And the ones in the dorm halls raise even higher than this one. So, mm -hmm. cause I remember I had mine pretty high my freshman year. So and they can always have them low too. I know some people like it that way. Yes. 
What other questions do we have tonight? Yes, yes. So the beds are adjustable. Um, you can do it yourself if you have issues. Um, either our student staff or our physical plant staff can assist you in raising the beds. Uh, they just move up in notches. So you can sort of adjust them to the level that you know, you're know you comfortable with, um, whether that's getting in and out of the bed or if you want to use more storage under your bed. It's very easy to do. I done it myself for the past few years and did it myself just like last weekend so <laughs> very easy to do too <laughs> we have a question about are bed risers permitted bed risers are not permitted again those beds rise pretty high on their own so um, you don't need the bed risers and they're not permitted on campus do the and rooms have clocks and trash cans <laughs> Danielle, do you want to just go over like what each room has? Sorry, I was having a hard time unmuting myself. Yes, I can go through that real quick. So all of the um, bedrooms, so I'll, I'll speak specifically for the bedrooms. So this counts for the suite bedrooms and all the traditional halls. I guess my screen is still muted too. Sorry, I was trying to like casually go through the chat without being like looking off to the side. Um, so in the bedrooms, each each room itself is fitted with two beds because there's in the double bedroom. So it's two beds, both are twin XL. So just keep that in mind when you're buying bedding. Um, all really all chain stores like Walmart, JCPenney's, Target, they do all sell um, twin XL bed bedding. So like, don't worry about having a hard time trying to find that um, widely available. So each room itself, if they're for two person occupancy, has two beds, two dressers, um, two desks, and two desk chairs in them. And then in most of the buildings, there is either a built-in closet or a wardrobe. Um, in Queen Anne, there's like wardrobes in most of the rooms where the closet would be, um, but there is still like space in each space to hang things. And then in PG, Dorchester, and Caroline, there's actually like on top of the closet, there's very deep storage spaces that are back there. So you you can put a lot of things in there. Um, they're high up, but you can easily reach them by like just standing on a chair or standing on your bed. Um, and then in the suites, it's very similar. So in the LQ suites and the WC suites, two of everything that I mentioned. And then in the townhouses, um, there are a few transfers that are transfer students that are in the townhouses. The bed spaces, bedroom spaces are still basically the same. Um, in the Crescents, there is only one dresser per bedroom, but it's like a taller dresser with more shelves in it. So you can share that with your roommate um, and two closet spaces. Um, and then in the townhouses themselves, they also have like the kitchen set up and the living room set up. So there's couches in there, coffee table, um, and like a dining room set. And then in the suites, there's also like a kitchenette area. So it has like a dining table, dining chairs, and then a living room area that has the couches and a coffee table in it as well. And the traditional halls, um, they are the, the bedrooms, the standard double bedrooms. And then there's bigger lounges that you can hang out in um, that have like lobby furniture and TVs and some of them and things like that. So each room does have a trash can in it. We don't have clocks in them, um, but there are like plenty of outlets and things that students usually bring their own stuff like that to kind of like decorate it to make it seem more homey to them. So that's really what we have in all of our spaces. Derek, can you please share the uh, what time the campus tour is during the Saturday's orientation? Uh, there is a tour um, on the first evening. Um, so a general tour around campus sort of get let you get to know um, sort of our traditions and then uh, depending on your orientation group in the afternoon on Saturday, you will have your um, campus tour about where your class is. And what are the start and end times for events on the 27th and 28th? We have some commuters who may have to work. Uh, so on Saturday, the 27th, our events will go until um, Daniel Martin, our magician, will perform until 930. Um, that's our last residential or on campus uh, for event for commuters. Uh, we will have some residential programs in that, that evening and you're free to join any of the residence halls for those programs. That those will go until about 1030. 
Um, and on Sunday to the 28th, um, after our waterfront activities, we have a religious services um, activity um, from four to six. That is optional, uh, but, and the waterfront activities are optional as well. We have a student who is asking about a ban on microwaves. Um, apparently, uh, they were told by the accommodation staff that there's no longer a ban on microwaves in dorm rooms. Is that I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a ban on microwaves. They were just a prohibited item, but they're no longer prohibited. Students can bring a microwave with them, just one per room. So similar to the fridge, uh, mini fridge, one mini fridge per room and one microwave per room. Um, you don't want to like blow all the circuits with all your microwaves. So just limit it to one. That'd be nice. And I did see a, a question about communal kitchens. There is a kitchen for each of our residence hall uh, in the traditional halls. It's located on the first floor. Um, recently renovated, they look really nice. Um, so usually students use this for uh, making birthday cakes for their friends or potluck dinners, things like that. So uh, usually some activity in those areas. Uh, you will need your own uh, utensils, pots and pans to cook in those kitchens. Other questions? When will the students receive their itineraries for orientation? We will be sending those out uh, in the next few weeks. And do most students bring printers? So really students can, you can bring a printer. Most don't, they kind of take up a lot of space in your room and we don't allow for wireless printers. Um, there is an allotment that each student has to print assignments for, um, and most most people don't go over that allotment. Um, most of the students I've talked to are like well within um, their budgeted printing expenses, and I think like recently more faculty have um, allowed for like assignments and papers and things to be turned in electronically. So there hasn't been as much printing in the past couple of years as you may. So I would say you probably don't need a printer. Is it uh, a manual? Do what, do you, yeah. what has been your experience with printing? I have only ever used the library to print. I've known one person to bring a printer and they've used it maybe one or two times when yeah. it was a little too late at night and they didn't feel like walking all the way to the computer lab at the library. Um, but yeah, you will get $30 a semester to print at the library. If you run out of it, you it's like th it's what is it thirty dollars three hundred pages is the amount of printing you have each semester. Um, and like Danielle said, most professors do things online now. Um, I haven't had to print something out for an assignment it, since like my freshman year, and I'm going into my senior year, so you don't have to print very often. Lizzie or Emmanuel, can, I'm sorry. I was gonna ask Lizzie or Emmanuel if they could talk about what are the flex dollars, how do you use them? Uh, so flex dollars are basically like uh, school dollars that we use for like the grind and Solomon's Kitchen or vending machines around campus. Um, they come preloaded onto your account and you kind of just swipe your card with it and it'll just withdraw and you can always check your balance on the uh, student portal. Um, it's very useful instead of using real money and you can always upload more money onto it if you need to but i don't know anybody who has actually done that actually i have it, before um yeah. it's it's it changes over to something called campus debit but yeah flex money is really useful it's when you select a meal plan so all first year students living in traditional dorms are required to have the unlimited meal plan um each meal plan has a different amount of flex money preloaded onto your card it will not like automatically recharge or withdraw from your actual bank account if you're worried about that. Um, but it does run out. I tend to spend all of mine on smoothies because um, our smoothies are really good. Um, but yeah, you can buy lots of snacks from the grind. Um, you can buy lots of good food at Solomon's Kitchen, like Emmanuel said. And then of course, yeah, the vending machines are on campus. There is a question, um, sorry, I'm going back to look for it, um, about if, I, I think it may be coming from a parent, 
if they want to come back on Saturday or Sunday to help their student uh, finish unpacking. If students want to have additional help on Saturday or Sunday moving in, is there a time to come back to help them? Hmm. I think honestly, Friday might be a better day for uh, if you need additional assistance. Uh, all students will have advising on Friday afternoon uh, from 1.15 to 4. Um, outside of the advising time, we have some other activities for you to take part in, but that might be a good opportunity to catch up on uh, any moving issues that you might have. Um, so I think Friday might be a better day. Saturday is pretty packed with mandatory um, activities. Can students bring air fryers to their rooms? Um, so I, I, I caution against you bringing a lot of appliances. Um, so there are definitely appliances that are a hard no for us. So if it has like an exposed heating element, like a coil, um, or a, like a, a flame, um, it, it's a definite no. Um, air fryers that have a really limited voltage, I think are okay. Um, I personally would not bring them. Um, we do want appliances in the residence halls to have like automated shutoffs um, so they can't overheat uh, or like smoke out the building. Uh, I'll say if you, if you bring one um, and it does start to see that we have a fire alarm. We're definitely going to revoke your air fryer privileges. Uh, no longer safe for you to have it. But we do have um, in our, on our residence website, honestly, the easiest way to get there is probably just Googling prohibited items SMCM. It'll take you directly to the link that'll kind of like list out all of the um, like kitchen-esque things that you can bring. Um, the, the residence halls are not designed um, for students to be cooking like full meals in them, which is why we have like the unlimited meal plans as well. So take, take that with a grain of salt of like what you're bringing with you. Like we definitely, there's not the space to have a full kitchen in your residence hall room. Um, you definitely don't want to be cooking all your food in your residence hall room. Uh, there's a lot of people around. Your roommate should be given some consideration there. So I would definitely not recommend bringing like most kitchen appliances like microwave, totally fine. Um, a Keurig, great. Little tea kettle that has an automated shutoff that's not whistling very loud, also totally fine. Um, just, I would recommend keeping appliances to a minimum. Can Angie talk about what are some of the other programming events that will occur post orientation, like that week of welcome? Sure, I'd love to. So past orientation, our week of welcome, we'll have plenty of fun events. A lot of them are gonna be done through our SGA or Student Government Association program board. So they're currently planning on doing a movie night for y'all outside. Um, they have different art vendors coming to campus. We're also gonna do another waterfront day. So if you didn't get enough that Sunday, don't worry. There's gonna be plenty of fun going on the waterfront. And then we'll also have events throughout the semester as well for students to have some time to interact socially with their peers, take a step back from studying, uh, but definitely the fun does not end with orientation, that's for sure. Looks like there's a sh uh, question about shuttles leaving for campus. We do have a campus shuttle on the weekends. Uh, it takes students up to the major shopping centers, so Walmart, Target, um, and it does a few loops so you can um, jump off at Target and um, do some shopping and the shuttle will come back around um, at a specific time to get you back to campus. That does run throughout the semester. Ah, so where can students find out the books that they're going to need for their courses, students? In my experience, I've gone to this campus bookstore website and then put in the classes that I'm taking, and they usually pop up the books that they need for the class. Um, but that's been my experience. I also do syllabuses. I'm sure Lizzie had some other way. Yeah, I usually, when I do it, I just look them up um, using the course code on my course schedule that you can find in portal. I look that up at the campus store and it'll generate everything for me. 
But um, I also tend to get in touch with my professors and like Emmanuel said, use the syllabi from class that'll tell you the required books. Um, Cause sometimes they'll be like, actually I changed my mind about that one and you won't have to spend money on it. Or they're like, actually I want you guys to read this as well but I can provide a digital copy. Um, usually professors are wanting to help you find books afford like at an affordable price. They don't usually try to make you get the most expensive thing on the market, so. And yeah, most syllabi are available before classes start. Your professor will usually send them to you. It depends on the professor. Sometimes they send them a week before, sometimes a few days before, but you usually do get them through email before your classes start. I'll throw this one out to Kathy and Joanne since they are both uh, in our faculty as well. Should you have your textbooks ready on the first day of class or wait to get them? <laughs> that really depends. Um, <laughs> how sure are you that you're not gonna change your class schedule? If you are pretty sure you're gonna keep your classes, it's not a bad idea to get your books early and start looking through them and uh, being prepared for class discussions. Some classes will actually start with the teaching and learning that very first day or during the first week. And that would be my class, but I have a free book. So <laughs> you can and my book is not free. free. <laughs> and a lot of times faculty will give homework out on the first day. So having the book ready, um, is, is going to be a benefit to you. Yeah, it makes life easier. Uh, you can log into Blackboard. You could log into Google Classroom. You'll probably have received an email invitation to do so. And that'll also tell you what's expected. So you can be prepared. And don't worry, half of them will have the book and half of them won't. But I'll just tell you, a lot of us hit the ground running and it makes it more fun for you to be able to engage completely. Okay, I'll give it a few more seconds for any more questions. Uh, can you get a parking pass only for a second semester? Yes. Um, so if you decide for the fall semester that you don't want to have a car on campus, uh, you don't have to get a parking decal for the year. But if you do um, decide in the spring semester that you want to have a car on campus, um, you can work with public safety and they will get you a parking decal. Just remember that spaces will be taken, so um, you'll get a spot where uh, there is space. Yes, most classes will start the first week of class, just about, I'd say 99% of them are going to start the first week, unless there's some extenuating circumstance of that faculty member, you will have class um, during the first week. Unless it's a half semester course. True, true. Question, uh, I've seen this a couple of times. Are there any bug issues in the residences? Danielle, do you want that one? Are, are we, what kind of bugs are we asking about? <laughs> but it's a weird question. The creepy crawly kind. I mean, we are. Oh, okay. You know, <laughs> Somebody was asking about bed bugs too. <laughs> okay, I, I defaulted to like FBI bugs, like wire <laughs> That's a no. Um, bed bugs are really a no. Um, I've been on campuses that have had bed bug problems. We definitely do not have bed bug problems. Um, we do have, most of our buildings have the, um, oh my God, I'm losing words, the plastic covered mattresses. Um, or I guess you can't say they're like bed bug proof, but they're as close to bed bug proof as you can get. Um, we do not have that as a problem on campus. Um, we have systems in place, so if that would be a problem, we can address it very quickly. But I wouldn't say that we've really had any on campus in the past we've been here for four years, and it's not a problem here. Just remember that we are pretty rural, oh. um, and some buildings are very close to wood, so there will be bugs that find their way in. We do treat the buildings regularly, uh, but you will find uh, an occasional spider or um, you know water bug. All of our buildings are air conditioned. We do transition to heat sometime late October, early November. We start to um, turn off the air conditioning and transition to heat. You can have a Roku. Uh, we have uh, a full cable um, package. I don't know 
I've found that most students aren't watching our cable and using more um, internet services. Lizzie, Emmanuel, what do you what do you use? I use my laptop to stream usually. Um, I that's all I did in my freshman year when I lived in a dorm. I didn't bring a TV. Um, I know some people did. Uh, it's kind of a personal preference and what space you have available with your roommate. But once I like moved out of the dorms into like townhouses and suites, we kind of all chipped in together on like a TV and used that. But usually I just use my laptop to stream and it was it was more than enough for me. But but all the yeah, other just, oh, go for sorry, it. David. Yeah, I have the same experience. Um, there's that occasional thing in Warren Commons where you find that big TV that they got for all the places but nobody uses because they're kind of outdated, but um, it's mostly streaming, uh, but you can always hook it up if you need to. And all of the, the Roku's, Apple TV's, Fire Sticks, they all will work um, on campus. Mm -hmm. um, here's a question using a phrase I'm not familiar with. Is the Wi-Fi good enough in the dorm rooms or is it wise to invest in a MiFi box? Oh, a little Mifi. Um, okay, Wi-Fi Mifi. is pretty good. We uh, over COVID, we spent two oh, significant dollars to enhance Wi-Fi across the campus. I know in my experience, um, but like compared to freshman to like sophomore year Wi-Fi, it was a lot better sophomore year. Um, so it's definitely improved and it's pretty good quality. And if you want to invest in anything, maybe an Ethernet cable would be good. Sometimes physically plugging into the Ethernet with your computer um, onto our edgy roam internet tends to work better if mobile net isn't working as well or wireless edgy room isn't working super well. Um, and sometimes you just need to go to a different building and it works better there. But for the most part, our Wi-Fi has been pretty good. Can the AC in the rooms be under student control? So they are not under student control, but they are at a range that's set from our physical plant staff in the beginning of the year. So like both AC and heat, I believe I might be incorrect on this, are set between 68 to 72 degrees like constantly. So when the air's on, it's cooling it to 68 to 72. When the heat's on, it's heating it to 68 to 72. Do students have to pay to do laundry? No, well, kind of, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so it's already built into residential fees. So it is free uh, to use it, but you don't need coins. You don't need your one card. Um, each residential area has a laundry room. So you just take your stuff down there, put it in, set up your machine however you want it, um, and then switch it over to dry and then you're done. Uh, so you don't have to swipe anything in there. You don't have to do anything like that. Um, so in the traditional halls, uh, which is where most of our first year students or all of our first year students are, that is on the bottom floor of the residence hall. Um, your resident assistants in your first meeting, which is part of orientation, will kind of explain the layout of the building. So they'll familiarize you with that. Um, for those of you living in the townhouses, LQ or WC, there are spaces in your area as well um, that are pretty convenient to most students in that area to be able to access, but it's the same. Uh, your resident assistants will kind of point those out to you when you have your first meetings with them. Is laundry detergent provided or do we need our own? So we, you should bring whatever you choose to use. Um, so whatever you're using now, like at your house, like if you want to keep using that, cool. If you want to switch it up, also cool. Uh, but you can bring whatever you want to bring with you. Um, I know students do use uh, Tide Pods. Um, you, can, you can use them. I think it's better to just use like the liquid detergent, to be honest. Um, definitely recommend if you are using a Tide Pod to don't put it in the little like places where you dump your laundry detergent into because it will not work well with the machines, but you can bring them if you want to. And just remember it, the machines are high efficiency, so make sure you're buying yeah. high efficiency um, detergent. And this is a good time if you haven't done laundry before to get some practice at home before you come down. Um, parents te teach all of the tips and tricks about doing laundry. Don't want pink socks or maybe. Yeah. And bring a laundry basket with you because that is something that I think some people forget and 
it does make it more convenient if you have the basket that you can kind of just go around with. All right, uh, we're coming up on our time. Um, so thank you all for joining us this evening. We hope that you got a lot out of this session. Um, we're, again, we're always available. So please feel free to reach out to our offices during uh, business hours, Monday through Friday, and we're happy to continue answering any questions that you might have. Um, we look forward to seeing you in just a few weeks. Um, and yeah, we're excited to, to meet you all. Thank you. Uh, a couple more questions for you uh, about the pots and pans. A few people are asking about mixers and if they want to bake, are they allowed to bake and do they need to bring a hand mixer? Again, I mean, like Danielle said, you don't want to bring too many appliances, um, sort of less is more. Um, so I wouldn't bring a hand mixer or a stand mixer with you to college, you know, good old fashioned muscle. Uh, will help you, you know, mix those cakes up. Well, we look forward to seeing everybody soon. Thanks.